The purpose of this video is to talk to you about the difference between independent and dependent variables. This is very important when it comes to writing a hypothesis. Typically, the independent variable becomes part of the if statement for our hypothesis, and the dependent variable becomes part of the then statement in our if-then breakdown. Um, an example for this would be if we were testing the cross-country team and we were trying to see if vitamins allow runners to run faster. So our if-then statement would be, if runners take vitamins, then they will run better times. Now in order to set this up, we're going to need two things that we haven't really talked about too much yet. We're going to need a control group, and then we're going to need a group that's our experimental group. So in this case, our control group is going to be the group that takes no vitamins. The experimental group will be the group that does take the vitamins. So we're assuming that none of the runners were taking vitamins before. You'd have to make sure, and if, if somebody is uh, you know, already taking vitamins, you'd have to just eliminate them from the study just to keep things consistent. So our control group would stay the same. That's the whole idea behind the control. It, it provides you with a basis of comparison. Uh, think about it this way. If we gave everybody on the cross-country team the vitamins and they all started running better, it wouldn't really prove anything. There could be other changes. Maybe they ran at a much easier course this week, and that's why everybody ran better times, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the vitamins that they were taking. So in order to go through and make the comparison something that's actually valid, you need the idea of a control group that stays the same and then an experimental group that we change. So it's always set up in that if-then format. The if part links to the independent variable, the thing that we are changing, whatever you're choosing to change in the experiment. So in this case we're looking at the vitamins, whether or not we're giving the runners vitamins. The dependent variable then is their times. So we'll take a second to write this one down. So our independent variable in this case is the vitamins. And what we're going to look at are two groups. We either have the control group where they are not getting any vitamins or our experimental group where they are getting the vitamins. Remember the importance between these two groups is that the control group is going to allow us to draw conclusions. If all of the runners get better, it doesn't really tell us anything if we give them all the vitamins. You know, they might have run on an easier course or another variable could have changed for this week. So the experimental group and the control group is going to give us a comparison difference at the end. The important thing to remember with our dependent variable is it's the times. And what we're hoping is that the times that the runners produce are going to be impacted by whether or not they're taking the vitamins. What we're looking at now is whether or not the times of the runners either go up or go down. We're not really worried about that in comparison to each other. We're worried about their times in comparison to how they ran previous to the beginning of the experiment. So if we have somebody who's in the experimental group who's getting the vitamins and their time is going down, that's evidence that the vitamins help the runner. If we have somebody that's in the experimental group and their time is going up, then that's evidence that maybe vitamins actually hurt the runners. They don't make them better. The thing to take away from this, though, is that the independent variable is what we change. That's what the scientist is manipulating. Uh, you might have heard this referred to as the manipulated variable in the past. The dependent variable is whatever we're measuring. We're going to measure the times of the runners. Uh, you might have heard this one listed as the uh, responding variable in the past. It's the same thing. Independent is the same as manipulated. Responding is the same as dependent. Uh, but we're going to use these terms because that's the way your book outlines things. Just keep in mind, this is what we're changing, and this is what we're measuring. Uh, make sure you take a minute to answer the questions at the end of this video. And as always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. Thanks.